and what we're covering today, stage three. We're talking about the 12 steps on the story structure. And this really has to do with going back to where my background came into and how I got connected in the first place in the history of religions. And we're talking here about Joseph Campbell. You know, some years ago, what Joseph Campbell had done is he talked about the 12 stages of the hero's journey. And I'm exploring the 12 stages and how your screenplay, your novel, your memoir, your book, your short story, whatever it might be, should really be helped and assisted by these stages. So the better that you know these stages, the better off your story is going to be. And that's really what I'm talking about and describing here for your help. So with this, we find that Joseph Campbell had the original 17 stage monomyth that was inspired by studies of the journey of the archetypal hero and mythologies found in different cultures and countries throughout the course of world history. Now, fortunately, didn't stay confined to my field, the history of religions, but got into stories. So in Hollywood and places like Disney, people started to pick up on this and they say, this is really the way to craft a story. This particular episode is stage three, the refusal of the call. And in this, the hero initially refuses the adventure because of hesitation, fears, insecurity, or any other number of issues. So we've talked about stage one, the ordinary world, then into stage two, we can move into that as well too, because that's the call to adventure. And this particular episode has to do with stage three. Now the hero has got a decision, don't they? Stage three, refusal of the call. In stage three, what can come next? Well, that's the refusal of the call. The hero initially refuses the adventure because of hesitation, fears, insecurity, or any other number of issues. And here I'm going to offer you three, you count them, three reasons why your protagonist should refuse the call to adventure and how your script, your book, your novel, your memoir, your story can benefit from that refusal. Number one, this creates tension and conflict. And if you recall from the second type of stage. We were talking there and describing that the conflict is really key. Well, this refusal, the call of adventure, can work within any type of story because of the structure and narrative, even one that doesn't hit all the marks of the Campbell or Vogler, who took the adaptation for the screen the journey stages. The call to adventure is the inciting incident that pushes your protagonist into the core conflict of your story, which comprises the central concept of your script. Imagine a screenplay with a protagonist that is a private detective. Someone comes to them with a case. They take it and begin their investigation. You show them in your ordinary world and they introduce the call to adventure. That's the opening of your script and most of your first act as well. Now imagine the same scenario, but you inject a scene, a moment, a sequence where your protagonist doesn't want to take the case. Maybe they feel that it's too dangerous. Maybe they have a personal connection. Maybe they don't trust the person that is hiring them. Doesn't that added refusal add some spice to not only the opening of your screenplay, but to the whole first act as well? When a character refuses a call to adventure, there have to be reasons why, and those reasons you offer. The screenwriter, the ability to inject tension into the opening pages of your screenplay, your story, your memoir, your book, your fictional novel, whatever it might be. Tension is equated to conflict, and conflict is a vital element to any screenplay, any story. The more, the better. Now, if you contact me, I'm going to give you a little clip, which is Luke Skywalker's refusal of the call that added to that particular film. Number two, second reason, to showcase the risks and stakes involved. The best screenplays show big risks and big stakes that characters must overcome. The refusal of the call to adventure offers you the opportunity to introduce those risks and stakes. In The Lord of the Rings, Frodo's initial refusal reveals that even Gandalf, a man of great power and ultimate goodness, could become seduced by the power of the One Ring. Contact me. I'll give you the clip.
to watch Frodo's refusal of the call that illustrates this point. In our private investigator example, the reason or reasons that characters are refusing to take on the case allows us to be able to show the reader or audience what the character could be risking if they did. What if the case involved the missing person that was linked to some dangerous mafia gangsters? If the private investigator gets involved, they may uncover details that the mafia doesn't want to be divulged, thus making the private investigator a threat to them. Now the PI has enemies, and dangerous ones at that. We just injected high stakes for that protagonist, and if they take on that case, they're going to be at risk. So whether you employ all 12 steps of Vogler's Hero's Journey, the adaptation from Joseph Campbell, or not, the refusal of the call to adventure can help you amp up your tension and conflict by raising the risks and stakes involved. Number three, to create empathy and character depth. Any character can take on an adventure or handle a conflict that's thrown at them. We've seen that time and time again in any action flick. But not every movie that's action-oriented takes the time to create empathy for the protagonist or offers character depth that allows us to feel empathy towards that character. When a protagonist refuses the call to adventure, they're revealing their own insecurities, fears, and inner conflicts. This is a bridge to allow the reader and audience to feel empathetic, empathetic towards the protagonist, we're allowed to relate to that character or, at the very least, sympathize with their plight. In Rocky, we only get a brief refusal of the call to adventure, but he's offered the chance of a lifetime. But the fact that he initially rejects the offer shows his insecurities. He may be a fighter, but he's insecure with himself and his abilities, and that introduces a lot of empathy. Get in touch with me. I've got a clip. I'll show you this. Watch Rocky's refusal of the call. And it also offers some introduction to key character depth as well. If our private investigator took the case instantly, that may show some bravado, but we're missing out on some character depth and opportunities for some empathy. Most people won't relate to a character that just takes on a case no matter what the risks may be. But if you show that they are hesitant, you can start to reveal any number of possible compelling character traits. Maybe the private investigator is asked to take on a missing child case, and it's revealed that they lost their own child to a sexual predator. They refuse the case because it's too close to home. But what if they end up taking the case to help them get closure and prevent another parent from losing a child? This is how you create empathy and introduce further character depth all because you had your protagonist refuse the call to adventure. The refusal of the call to adventure allows you to create instant tension and conflict within the opening pages and first act of your story. It also gives you the chance to amp up the risks and stakes involved, which in turn engages the reader or audience even more. And it also manages to help you develop a protagonist with more depth that create sympathy or empathy for them. Stage four, meeting the mentor. Oh, wait, that's not until next time. So what I will do is cover that the next time. But hopefully from stage three, you've got enough of how to increase tension, character depth, and empathy for your leading character. That's it for this particular episode of the Dr. Digital Podcast, stage three. The hero's journey. Until next time, it is fall.